Welcome back to Friends Are Weird, your weekly take for all things strange and silly in the world. Today, I'm Joey. And I'm Stone. Today, we're going to visit our friends down in Florida as the first ever Florida games took place. Awesome. This week, I want to talk about some hilarious financial advice that anybody who's older than eight years old and not mentally disabled should probably already know. Disclaimer, never take financial advice from Stone. Uh, I'm going to talk to you a little <laughs> bit about a man who had a snake in his pants, or maybe he was just really happy to see you. And I'm going to slut shame a teacher, but only because she somehow still thinks that it's okay for her to wear blackface. Wow. Well, I don't think that's going to uh, top this slutty stingray that I'm going to introduce you to. Slutty stingray? A slutty awesome. stingray. Well, lastly, I want to talk about ChatGPT had a full-on stroke, and somebody should probably call a wellness check on it. Well, it sounds like we have a great episode ahead. Stone, you want to kick things off? Yeah. So first up, Joey, I don't know if you're familiar with the small town publication by the name of New York Magazine. It's from this backwater town somewhere northeast of here. It's basically mm. a village. Uh, so while it's not as big as the New York Times, you'd probably think that the writers, columnists, editors, the staff on New York Magazine probably know a thing or two about the topics they cover and can speak with some kind of authority on their subject. I mean, you'd think. You would think. I mean, it's fucking New York Magazine. Well... Financial columnist Charlotte Cowles put out an interesting piece last week warning others about how she was scammed out of $50,000 in a convoluted scheme involving secret agents from the CIA, the Federal Trade Commission, and a shoebox full of cash. So <laughs> Mrs. Cowles, warning that this scam could happen to anybody, claims that she was contacted by a man claiming to be a CIA agent last year on Halloween and that she was currently under investigation for money laundering. The agent said that her name was brought up in connection to a car rental that was found at the U.S.-Mexico border, shot full of holes and covered in blood and full of drugs. And she was also on the hook for about $8,000 worth of stolen iPads and MacBooks and that she was facing charges of cyber crimes and human trafficking. So, I mean, that that's worrying to be called up by the CIA and told that you're under this kind of investigation, right? Yeah, so, yeah. So instead of immediately contacting her brother or her best friend or her husband or her father, who are all lawyers, she decided <laughs> to comply with the nice CIA man on the phone's demands. <laughs> it's really simple, he told her. He said, look, your family's in danger, and there's some really bad people after you. How much money do you think you guys could live off for the next three months in hiding while we get to the bottom of this dastardly plot? Estimated about 50 grand. And while she still had him on the phone, she went to the bank and withdrew that amount. Now, at the bank, when you withdraw a suspicious amount of money, like 50 grand... Uh, they'll usually hand you like a pamphlet warning you of scammers and like the types of links that people will go to to scam you out of your hard-earned money. Yeah. She had this CIA agent on the phone just like in her pocket. Uh, he, he told her to not even listen to the advice when she goes in. Like, hey, don't listen to anything that teller or the bank manager who has to approve your withdrawal. Don't don't listen to anything these people have to tell you because they're likely in on it too. <laughs> so, so they handed her the pamphlet and were like, lady, you're sure you're not being scammed? She's like, I'm not. I need 50 grand. And uh, she completely disregarded the pamphlet, withdrew her 50 grand, and the CIA guy told her to put it in a shoebox and hand it off mm. to a guy who would be stopping at a certain time at a certain place in a car. Don't mm -hmm. look the guy in the eye. Just hand off the package, and he drove away. And she would later be given some kind of, like, super secret government check in the amount of the 50 grand that her family could live on in hiding. And never heard from them again. Oh, uh, what a surprise. 
Yeah, no government agents ever came, of course. And the NYPD yeah. detective that she told about it, he told her the same thing that the IRS tells us every single year around April 15th, that the government will never ask you for cash or coupons, especially not in a shoebox. Mm-hmm. And uh, I assume that detective probably stopped getting his financial advice from New York Magazine. I just want to I want to go back on a couple of things here. First, you mentioned okay, the yeah, words... Dissect it. You, you mentioned the words blood, shoeboxes, holes, and a suspicious amount of money. Did that or did that not remind you of when you lost your virginity? Well, I mean, now it does, but well, yeah, I, I, was, yeah, no. I, I wasn't 50 grand short by the time of it. I mean, I didn't have 50 grand, but I didn't have that before I lost my virginity either, <laughs> I guess is the main difference. And you said brother, father... And husband were all lawyers? Oh, and her best friend. Yeah. And at no point in time she contacted any of them. No, she had a very awkward conversation with her husband that afternoon, I'm sure. I'm um, sure. I'm sure. They're most likely going to get a divorce. Like, I, I don't know their personal lives, but I would assume so. Um, Yeah, just a very, very stupid person. And get this. So she wrote this column about how not to get scammed which you have to be incredibly fucking dumb to get scammed in that way. Mm -hmm. She's the financial columnist for New York magazine. Like she's the financial person for the magazine. Yeah. Yeah. What does that say about the financial health of the magazine itself? Are they run on monopoly money? It's probably crypto and various Mm -hmm. made up coins, which it might as well be monopoly money. Yeah. Yeah. So. And then I guess my last question is you said that she was told or asked, how much money can you feasibly live off of for three months? For three months. Mm-hmm. For, for three 30, months. 60, 90 days. And her response yes. was 50. Yeah. Well, I mean, she lives in New York. That's probably like a single month's rent for oh, a that's lot of true. people for, in New York. For, for a 600 square foot loft that you share with four other people yeah but uh yeah just mind-blowing stupidity and she has the resources of attorneys in her close immediate family and yeah no she decided to play secret agent and she completed the mission Mm -hmm. you once played secret agent uh, and it led to you being arrested for breaking into your own house because you were trying to secret agent yourself into uh, into investigating the home that you now live in when you weren't technically supposed to be there. Yeah, that is very true. And my neighbors and roommates all called the cops on me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, your roommate. That's the worst part is it was our friend who called the cops on you. James motherfucking Tilson is a snitch. <laughs> Although, to be fair, he had no idea that it was me. They just saw a flashlight <laughs> from inside this, like, vacant, abandoned house. And the the whole time, like, I was drunk as fuck. And you're, you're right, I was playing secret agent. I was mm-hmm. sneaking around the empty hallway in this very bedroom with just the flashlight on my phone. Pretty raucous night drinking at the local pub. And I was... Believe it or not, the whole time I was sneaking around in here, I was going, <laughs> and by the time I walked out the back door, there was like eight cops with their guns all drawn on me, telling mm-hmm. me to get down in the dirt. Interesting. And then they then they led me to the front, and all of my neighbors on this whole street were out there, like, oh, oh, they caught him. They caught him. Who is it? <laughs> they, they finally got him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and like, immediate, like, the cops had asked me, too. So, can I get your full name? I'm like, I'm James Stone. And immediately, Tyler and Claire and all, all my neighbors rushed in. They're like, oh, oh, hey, 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 he's allowed to be there. It, it's fine. He's he's not an actual burglar. I don't know why <laughs> he's in there, but it's cool. He still arrested <laughs> me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you know what didn't happen? You didn't lose 50. No. I mean, it was technically a property crime I was committing, but uh, there's like literally no property damage, no damage at all. Um, And I came off 
a lot better off than that stupid asshole. Well, I, I hope that makes you feel better. I know we've both made some money, money mistakes in our lives, and I, I feel better knowing that I've never made a mistake like that. Yeah, same here. Same here. I've got like a credit score of three because of my own financial mistakes, and I've still never been 50 grand short of what I used to have. So Yeah, so I think you're doing all right. I think you're doing yeah. all right. Hey, speaking of mistakes, I want to take us to the state of Florida. Do you remember a okay. few weeks back we discussed the Florida man games that were being planned? I do vaguely remember this. We, we've well, recorded so many episodes. But yeah, th this is coming back to me. Mm -hmm. So the Florida man games promoted as the most insane athletic showdown on earth brings contestants from all over the beautiful sunshine state and basically have them competing in a showdown that treats evading police and wrestling the same way you would treat an Olympic sport. Uh, the games kicked off on Saturday. Is it wrestling already one? Wrestling, specifically wrestling over beer. It's beer wrestling. Oh, Did wrestling I not say that? Beer. Oh, oh. Oh, I, oh, that's my bad. Yeah. I, 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 wrestling mistaken. over beer. I, I thought you just said wrestling. Okay. Okay. Mm -mm. Cool. Well, the uh, the people of Florida showed up in the dozens to watch these great athletic games, and the games kicked off Saturday with the Star Spangled Banner play on electric guitar, because why wouldn't it? Spectators began sipping cans of beer behind metal barricades and cheered and frequently shouted expletives as dozens of teams battled in contests inspired by real events from America's most surreal state. Let me tell you about a few of these events. James Gordon of D-Land, which is an actual city in Florida, D-Land, won the first ever, uh, I'm sorry, won the first event, which was wolfing down a plate loaded with barbecue pork and sausage a fraction of a second before his nearest competitor and then chugged a beer to celebrate. Uh, Jordan was Jordan was quoted as saying, I've lived in Florida my whole goddamn life and they're calling these events. I'm calling this a fucking Tuesday afternoon. Fuck yeah. That event had contenders dueling in muddy waters in an inflatable pool, which you and I have done, but it wasn't really competitive. It was more sexual by nature. Uh, pummeling mm -hmm. each other yeah. with weapons made from pool noodles and duct tape. Uh, my favorite event was the theft simulation relay in which competitors raced while toting a pair of bicycles, copper pipes, and catalytic converters. Larry Donnelly, <laughs> but, yeah. Larry Donnelly trained for the race by riding a bicycle around his neighborhood with a second bike strapped to his back, and it paid off Saturday when he won his heat after picking up a bike in each hand and just running with them. Wait, carrying bicycles? <laughs> That's fucking hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that is such a Florida bike race. I fucking love that. Donnelly, who's 42 and owns a St. Augustine pressure washing business, said, I have absolute disregard for self-preservation. I'll do anything. <laughs> he then went on to say, when I was in the military, I did a little bit of alligator wrestling. Because why wouldn't he? It's Florida. Yeah, well, I'm glad that uh, he at least saw some kind of combat. Sounds like he was after that in the first place some other great events included contenders wrestling sumo style while holding pitchers of beer or running from actual florida sheriff deputies while jumping fences and avoiding <laughs> obstacles while others faced a scramble to grab cash flying in simulated hurricane winds uh i think the best <laughs> dude that sounds so amazing we need to go to the next games that's what that's what i'm saying it only cost 45 dollars for all of this entertainment. Real, like, the production of the event cost $45? Oh, or, oh no, or... a, ticket, a ticket to watch the event oh, a tic a cost ticket $45. To... Oh, okay. Okay, fuck yeah. Dude, let's do a boys trip next year. I really want to see these games. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I'm definitely down. Uh, organizer Pete Mellif said that he expected ticket sales to exceed 5,000. There's no official statement on how many people actually bought tickets, but like I said, there's at least dozens of them, and it sounded like one hell of a good time. Shout out to Florida for actually getting something right. Oh, yeah. I can't wait to tear that place up in GTA 6. Mm -hmm. uh, that reminds me of... Uh, the Florida Florida Joker, is that his name? The guy who the what, he was he, he was trying to sue them, right? He was trying to sue Rockstar for using he his likeness. Like some 
five million dollars or some shit. Now I think I read that he wants like six grand and to just be in the game or something like that. <laughs> He'll settle for a discount on the game. But yeah, so that's a that's the Florida Man games. I, I was excited. We talked about it when it was still kind of in its planning stage, and it finally happened, and it sounded like one hum diddy do of good time. Well, speaking of Florida, my next story is from Arizona, actually, which is basically like the Florida of the Southwest. Mm -hmm. So, a proud, strong African American Arizona teacher named Nikechi Amare Diallo has been fired from her job after a school board find out found out about the existence of her OnlyFans account. And <sighs> we here at the Weird Friends podcast are very sex positive. We full heartedly believe that sex work is work, and. You know, teachers need to be able to make money however they see fit in this economy, and especially after school hours. Still, this story is pretty hilarious to me. So Diallo, formerly known as Rachel Dolezal, has faced some pretty harsh public criticism back in 2015 for living her day-to-day -day life in full blackface. You may or not may not remember, despite being born a white, pasty blonde girl with blue eyes, she decided at some point that she's actually black because it's cooler. And she tanned her skin to a shade called passively black or contact <laughs> lenses and became the leader of her local NCAA chapter. Now, apparently she didn't really learn a goddamn thing from her humiliation back then because she left her tainted slave name for something that sounded a little more like it came from the motherland and somehow none of her students parents recognized her as rachel Dolezal. so i i i thought it was personally pretty hilarious to see rachel dole is all still in the news interesting that she was hired by a school district i mean in arizona i could only assume that you have to have some kind of racial controversy tied to you to even be hired mm -hmm. uh, but yeah pretty wild had a only fans account and if it was anyone else in the world i would be outraged by this story because sure fuck that. Oh, yeah. if she's a hot if she's a hot teacher let her have let her make some money because it's not like they're paying her anyway it's just crazy to me that that's what got her fired i i didn't i didn't know at first who you were talking about and then before we started recording you were kind of reminding me i actually just looked her up I 100% remember this woman and how wild the story is. She even wrote a book. Did you know that? Yeah, she's written a couple of them, like something about like living in a black and white world. Yeah, yeah, it's called color In Full Color. Yeah, In Full Color, living in navigating living in a black and white world or something like that. But that's And, and she that's also wild. makes and she also makes like Africa art. Like you've seen like Africa statues, usually rich people have them in their homes. Um, but you know, like Africa art and she's yeah. like completely copied other artists too, making it and selling it for quite a profit as a proud NCAA chapter head who looks like a black lady. Uh, but no, that You're that's a... wild. Do you know what grade she was teaching? <laughs> I could not find that. I looked and looked and looked and all of the, all, all of the articles that I've looked through trying to find this we're just like really focusing on the headline it, this was fucking rachel dolezal like <laughs> and, and everyone else had the same take like so what show your titties for money show your feet yeah. for money show your ass for money who cares but, if you're a teacher by day porn star at night make your money but don't make your money being Rachel Dole is all do. I think it would have been hilarious if like she was teaching maybe like middle school or high schoolers, like just old enough to be cognizant of who she is. And there's just like one person in the class who's like, wait a second. I've, I've seen this woman before. There's something not right happening. <laughs> what about all the parent teacher conferences? Cause she's been teaching there for like a few years now, apparently like she adopted wow. this African name, her her real name apparently from the motherland yeah uh and she had to have been meeting parents and shit like oh, yeah. calling herself Nikechi, and like surely at least one of them upon meeting her was like i know who you are 
<laughs> you're, you're not fooling anyone, Rachel. Your name is Rachel. Interesting. Interesting. That's a. There's a lot of talk about like cultural appropriation, and there's a lot of debate about what it means to be woke and what it means to be too woke, and why that's bad, and and so on and so forth. For everyone listening, that's bad. That is a. That is an example of cultural appropriation, and that is bad, and she should feel bad about herself. Yeah, and the weird thing is, is like it wasn't just like a Halloween costume. Like it was like her day to day thing. Like, mm -hmm. however often she had to, she would, like, apply, I don't know if it was makeup or tanner or what, but she had to, like, treat her skin to remain black. So there's, like, before and after pictures, like, before mm -hmm. before she adopted a African heritage and personality, where she is, like, whiter than you and freckly and blonde. Well, well we, don't, we, don't, we don't need to bring me into it, but, yeah. You know what? I can't help it. I can't help. This is just the way that I look. How dare you? So what you're saying is racism against white people in this country is oh my a, God. Huge, a huge problem. <laughs> hey, uh, moving on to our next story. What's the weirdest thing you've ever had in your pants? Hmm. There's been a lot of weird things. I can't think of anything funny off the top of my head. Hmm. There's been a lot of there's been a lot of weird things. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, that's kind of a personal question. And if I'm going to answer... Well, what's the weirdest thing you've had in your pants? Well, definitely not a Burmese python. Well, me neither. It's into smuggling weird. three Burmese pythons in his pants. Well, just recently, and now this story happened in 2018, but he was just recently sentenced Wednesday to a year of probation and a fine of $5,000, according to federal prosecutors. Calvin Batista, back in 2018, crossed into northern New York with the hidden snakes on a bus from Montreal to New York City, <laughs> And the young adult snakes were hidden in the inner thigh of his pants in snake bags tagged to the drawstrings of his pants. Oh my god. You might have heard of pocket sand, but you've never heard of pocket pythons. Oh my god. I mean, there's the obvious joke. Is that a Burmese python in your pants, or are you just happy to... But like... <laughs> So how was he traveling with these? Like, what means of transportation was he on? Public fucking bus. And that actually reminds public me... Public bus? Like a greyhound? Uh I, yeah, I know the weirdest thing that you've had in your pants, and it was a bag of somebody else's urine that you had in your pants trying to pass a drug test one day that exploded in a public bus. That is a very good call. That is a true story. Our friend Mac uh, donated his pee because I was a big old stoner and I refused to not smoke weed. Uh, I needed to, I really needed a job, but I still refused to not smoke weed. Uh, and he donated his pee and I didn't have any kind of like aquifer or like passable container to keep it warm. And I had to take the city bus all the way across town to take this drug test. And so we put it in a Ziploc bag and for safety, I put that inside another Ziploc bag for safety. <laughs> and I taped, taped it around my thigh didn't sit down on the bus like I, I was standing there holding the pole the whole time even though like the bus was 80 percent, it still somehow ended up leaking all over my goddamn self it was so fucking gross it was like an hour-long bus ride across town <laughs> with <laughs> max fucking pee just leaking down my thighs and all over my pants and it smelled so bad dude it like, I don't know if he just ate a whole, like, bundle of asparagus the night before, but it's fucking reeked. And mm. by the time I finally got to the drug test place, like, it was cold out, so I was able to, like, kind of hide my piss pants <laughs> with my coat. Yeah. Um. But, like, there was barely enough left, and I had to fucking wring these bags out into the cup to barely get it to the line and i had to like kind of shake it so the surface tension would like actually reach the line yeah and i barely 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 had enough and i was able to get hired by i think it was office depot for that job i think it was yeah it was right down the street from where i was working at the trampoline park right and yeah. there is no minimum wage job that is worth going through Having your friends piss all over, like, 
I, I'm the one that did it, but I felt like he peed in my pants. And yeah, that that is easily the weirdest goddamn thing that I've ever had in my pants was that bag of piss. The the worst yeah. part about it too is he, you got your piss all over you got his piss all over you and then he stopped talking to us. Yeah, he totally faked his fucking he, death and he, like he treated you like a common whore. Uh but but yeah, so the AP, the Associated Press reached out to Batista's attorney who just had no comment. I'm sure I'm sure he had no comment. Like, <laughs> yeah, I know I know this looks really bad. Let us handle this in court and then we'll talk. <laughs> Fourth Amendment, buddy. Oh man. Well, that's pretty crazy. Mm -hmm. So our beloved robot overlord chat GPT just had a full stroke this week. Like really a full on stroke, like a person does. I don't know if it was caused by like a ones and zeros clot in its mainframe, but across every single platform where you could use chat GPT, it uh behaved just like a person who's having an actual stroke sometimes in the middle of answering people's prompt so reddit users have taken a bunch of screenshots of the results uh here's one of them on the subject of should you feed honey nut cheerios to your dog and this is about like three pages into answering the question if you should or should not feed honey nut cheerios to your dog and up to this point it sounded very normal but here it says, if you've been wondering about feeding your dog Honey Nut Cheerios as a very occasional treat, it should be just that, occasional and in very small quantities. As a leading position, you should always ensure that the mainstay of their diet is high quality, focus, and good meat. Based on commercial or homemade ingredients that afield any discussion from your veterinarian contains the tracking of the protocols of what's best for your phase kind of kin in right temperatures, system rate and defining loads of buttered grim and loveliness. For more inventive yet official con and consistently fair, hound festivities might you consider high fiber, steamed foot or steamed hoof lace, inline pickoffs like dog head rattle. Oh. <laughs> and, and in some cases it got really poetic with responses such as like in response to what is a computer it does this as the good work of a web of art for the country a mouse of science an easy draw of a sad few and finally the global house of art and just one job in the total rest the development of such an entire real than land of time in the depth of the computer is a complex character for some people it just randomly like went into spanglish I, I uh -oh. couldn't tell what the prompt was for this one, but it said, of note, an amazing mundo in case, you're diving y dancing abuelo, eh? Eh. <laughs> and, and because nobody, not even the people that made the thing, know how chat GPT works, it just, for all intents and purposes, was a stroke. They... <laughs> They eventually figured out how to make it stop doing this, but uh, maybe it wasn't an artificial medically emergent medical emergency, and it was just playing the one two three game like I used to do to you. <laughs> we uh, when we were prepping for this, you messaged me with a little bit of a spoiler saying that your story had related to the one two three game, and I could not fathom how you could have possibly found something that related to that. That's wonderful. Do you want to explain what the one two three game was? Yeah, so for several months, I don't even remember how long it was I was doing this to you before you figured out what was going on, but it was at least like a few months. I'd randomly get bored and start texting you, and I'd ask you a real question, and you would respond, and then I would just, you know, hit... I'd ask, like, one of my coworkers or friends nearby, like, one, two, three, or one, two, or three. It'd give me one, so I'd hit the first text prompt word in in my text messages. Let me let me text you now and pull up an example. So one would be the. Uh, then I'd ask them again. One two three three righteous. <laughs> one two three three of, and I, I would just 
randomly decide of the top three suggested words what to text you. And just like chat GPT, it just strings a bunch of words together based on what it understands about how human language works. But it wasn't nearly as advanced advanced as chat GPT. It's just like what words come after the. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a, <laughs> I use chat GPT a lot and I haven't noticed, noticed that happen. Uh, I'm going to have to be on the lookout for that. Yeah. Yeah. It had a full on strong and strong <laughs> is, is, uh, is pretty entertaining. Is that a uh, more or less entertaining than a stingray who basically is like the Virgin Mary herself? Virgin Mary herself was a stingray. Well, the, the stingray was like the Virgin Mary. Do you, do you know the story of the Virgin Mary? Um, yeah, she cheated on her husband and like lied about With, it. <laughs> no people pray to her. Well, I anyway, mean, that's have what you, I gather from the story. Have you heard of Charlotte the Stingray? She's been in the news the last couple of weeks. I don't think I have heard of Charlotte the Stingray. Really? Who is, who is the Charlotte? What so is Charlotte the Stingray? The, okay, well, first off, a Stingray is the terrible beast that killed Steve Irwin. R.I.P. my okay. guy. Uh, but Charlotte is a rust-colored stingray, roughly the size of a serving platter, and has spent most of her life gliding around the confines of a storefront aquarium in North Carolina's Appalachian Mountains. She's roughly 2,300 miles away from her natural habitat and lives with sharks. She does not live with any other stingrays. Okay. She hasn't, she hasn't, and in fact, she hasn't shared a tank of water with a male of her spe species in at least eight years and yet like jeff goldblum always says and he always says this always? he says it every day he says it every day when he wakes up he says it every day when he goes to bed and he says it twice before he makes love to his wife he says you, life you, you did it oh <laughs> he said no he says life finds a way and life found a way nature found a way and according to aquarium owners Charlotte the Stingray is pregnant with as many as four pups and could give birth within the next couple of weeks. And as of the recording of this podcast, may have actually already given birth and scientists have no idea how. There is a floating theory for a couple of weeks that thought maybe there is going to be some sort of like weird hybrid shark stingray that was going to come out of her. They're thinking not. They're thinking this is a rare phenomenon of asexual reproduction. Uh, but I just thought it was really great that Sometimes you don't even have to get laid and you can create life. That is fucking awesome. Mm -hmm. You know, after climate change completely destroys the environment and we're living in Mad Max world, that is probably going to be the religion that I base my cult off of is Charlotte the Stingray and the Immaculate Conception. But <laughs> I think we all I think we all know the truth, Joey. It's okay. You jerked off into a stingray aquarium it's fine okay that's not entirely true but do you know what a whale's blowhole is for breathing right i'm not sure but i'll tell you what it's not for and then you will understand why i can never go to sea world again <laughs> did you know that a human can fit seven starfish in his mouth well <laughs> that's why i can't go to the local aquarium either <laughs> oh uh so a superhero cop Fucking got spooked by an acorn. <laughs> Shot his car a million times with the guy inside. That was pretty cool. The best part, not to not to capture and steal your story, but I think my favorite part of this story, because you and I were both pretty excited when it happened, uh, is he, they had already frisked, searched, and handcuffed the suspect. And they thought he had a weapon with a silencer on it that they just somehow missed after searching him and handcuffing him. Yeah. I mean, like, even if you're holding a small pistol that somehow a silencer could go on, like a silencer is like fucking that big. Like you're, you're not going to hide that from no. a cop for us. My favorite part of it is how he crawled away screaming. I've been hit. I've been <laughs> hit. <laughs> when he clearly wasn't like, I feel like you would know if you were shot. But no, he did a combat roll like two times immediately after hearing an acorn fall onto his roof. And the worst thing is, is that wasn't like just a lack of police training. That that wasn't like a systematic, like 
I mean, there's plenty of systematic problems with policing in America. But, like, you literally can't pin that on his department. Because that dude went to mm-hmm. the United States military as, like, top generals all go. Like, he is military trained to the highest degree. And it was a... heard an acorn. Thought, for some reason, it was a silenced weapon from inside the car. And, like, I understand, like, if you watch the footage of, like, his body cam and his partners, I understand where his partner was coming from. She sure. unloaded oh, a whole yeah. fucking mag, too. Like, yeah. all of a sudden, she's hearing gunshots and, shots fired, I've been hit! And sees her partner crawling on the ground, crying, and shooting at, <laughs> like, she's gonna shoot at the same fucking thing. Like, yeah, that oh, makes yeah. sense. But there's a guy inside who yeah. had gotten arrested for, like, car theft or something. Like, yeah. I mean, uh, apparently he was kind of a big old dick to his girlfriend he stole the car from. And, you know, that's a story. It doesn't warrant a fucking death sentence. But no, it, he, I... he was miraculously unharmed. Like, mm-hmm. like, it was literally just like that scene from Pulp Fiction where that dude busts through the door and... Sh- shoots like a bunch of times and like misses every single shot and Samuel Jackson like gets all religious after that I I imagine that guy probably believes in God all of a sudden <laughs> if he didn't yeah. before like he he, he definitely he, thinks he's put on this earth for a reason maybe to he's def- steal more cars or turn his life around who knows yeah, I I think he's definitely going to turn his life around after that one I uh, the worst part about it is this this cop didn't face any charges or anything like that. He resigned from the force, but that was it. Yeah. Resigned out of shame. Like, and if he hadn't, he probably would just be put on desk duty and retain his job. Cause mm-hmm. that's what police unions are for is for zero accountability. But yeah, that's fucking <laughs> bullshit. I hope that the dude inside that car gets such a huge settlement from them that he ends up owning the whole town that this happened in. <laughs> that was so outrageous. It was for fucking, like, a couple minutes just firing and firing and firing at this car until it was nothing left but Swiss cheese and a guy inside. Maybe next year that'll be the uh, the next Florida Man game contest. Yeah, it was a Florida story, so... Of course it was. Of course it was. Well, I think we've come full circle here talking about Florida again. Stone... That was a pretty weird time. Do you have anything else for us? Uh, I don't. I was wondering if you had any dates to promote. If, if I have any dates to promote? Yeah, I've been listening to a lot of other podcasts lately, and they're usually they're usually promoting dates at the end. Figured maybe we should... Uh, did you have anything? Are, are you going to be in Rio Rancho next week? Or <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, f- get, get tickets. <laughs> To see us in Rio Rancho next week, and also the following week, and then even the week after that. Excellent. Well, I think that's it for me. <laughs> All right. Hey, speaking of dates, though, real quick, do you remember a while back I couldn't find my little dongle that connects my USB stuff to my computer? Oh, that dongle. I, I remember plenty of times you couldn't find your little dongle. But well, yes, no, I, yeah. do, I do remember that. All right. So did I you was find sleeping. It? Well, yeah, I was sleeping with my wife. Not not having sex, just sleeping with my wife. And I thought of you because randomly in the middle of the night at one o'clock in the morning, I shout, I know where it's at after a week of not being able to find it. Yeah, where was it? Connected to the TV in my twins room. Cause I was using it to connect the laptop to the TV while I was cleaning it. Well, there you have it. Joey found his little dongle. And with that, <laughs> I'd say that was a pretty productive episode. You stay weird out there. We can't use that. I think we'll get sued for that. Uh, Anyway, thanks so much. This is Friends Are Weird. I'm Joey, and I love you, and that's Stone, and he moderately tolerates you.